Ooh. All right. So the important thing when studying for step one is that when you take the exam, they're not going to give you a bunch of numbers that you have to throw into boxes and stuff. Um, what they're going to give you is either a, an article, they're going to give you um, just a giant word problem, and you're going to have to understand what's being asked of you. Uh, it will not be something like you see in the question banks where it's just, ah, oh, here are these numbers, then you just plug it into the formula. So because of that, it's important to understand what each test is, uh, when you would use it, and then you'll be able to apply it really well on test day. Trust me. So we're going to go through everything by understanding what it is and then going to look at examples. The best way to understand these tests is just to look at the name. In a cross-sectional study, you do exactly just that. It's a cross-section. So you look at society and then you say, well, how many people have, have cancer? How many people have coronavirus right now? How many people have Parkinson's, many people have Alzheimer's. It's just that. It's a super straightforward thing. What's going on? All right. So the one that always trips up everyone, or the ones, are cohort studies and case control studies. All right. So case control, again, the name tells you everything. Who has a disease? Those are the cases, right? And then who doesn't have the disease? Well, that's the control. All right. And then you look at people with the disease and without the disease, and from that you get an idea of maybe an exposure or something. You'd say, oh, we're, we looked at people with HIV compared to those without HIV, and it turned out, you know, people um, with HIV had much higher odds of um, doing IV drugs or something. All right. This this cohort study, the example they use is COPD. Well, let's let's keep everything in the in the example that we were using in terms of uh, HIV. Cohort studies are different from case control studies. Remember, case control studies is you look at people with the disease compared to those without, and you try and find maybe some sort of exposure or something. Cohort study is the, the opposite kind of, you know. What it is is you look at people with an exposure compared to those without an exposure, and then you see how that affects, you know, the, the disease state. So if we go back to the HIV example, we would say, you know, uh, IV drug users compared to non-IV drug users uh, had a greater risk in terms of a higher risk of, um, you know, uh, getting HIV. So a cohort study, again, we're looking at the risk, drug user versus non-drug user and their effect and that effect on developing the condition, which you could also call the case. So another way that we can do this in terms of COPD, we can say people with COPD versus people without COPD. Um, people with COPD were more likely to be smokers. Here, we'll think about it in terms of, well, smokers are at a greater risk of developing COPD. Like you think it's saying the same thing, but it's not. One is looking at the cases and how it affects a risk. One is looking at a risk and how it affects the cases. It's important because the tests that you use later on will depend on that, but we'll get into that later on. All right, crossover studies. Crossover studies, just like it says right here, it compares blah, 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 but let's visually look at it first. Okay, so a crossover study typically involves at least two groups, all right, group one, group two, and what it is, it's looking at the effect of two different drugs or two different treatments, all right. And you have something that's very particular to crossover studies here in the middle called a washout period. And what's going on during the washout period is also why it's called a crossover study. You can see why right here, because you have this going down here and this going up here. So let's kind of define everything. In group one, you have participants taking drug A. We'll call it azithromycin, and in group two, you have participants taking drug B, we'll call it some bogus placebo. So what do you do? Well, you're just testing the effect of each drug, all right, so, or of a treatment. So, uh, you know, group one is taking azithromycin for four weeks. This is arbitrary. It can be five weeks, six weeks, six months, whatever. All right, and then right here, group two, taking the, the bogus placebo or treatment B for four weeks. All right, great. Now you want to see the effect, what happens with group one, 
when they end up taking drug B? Well, you can't just do it immediately, okay? You can't just say, well, okay, we're going to take drug A for four weeks and then drug B for the next four weeks. Because, you know, what if the effect of drug A still, still lasts for a little bit? So that's why you have this wash-up period. So you assume that everyone gets back to, to neutral, to a normal state, and go from there. So one last time, crossover, you have one group, they do something for a certain amount of time, you allow the drug to wash out because you've stopped it and you wait a little bit, and then for a certain amount of time you do a different treatment. Here it's B. Same thing here. B, wash out, and you end with A. You never start and end with the same thing. And then finally, right here, twin studies and adoption studies are two sides of the same coin. It just looks at, you know, heritability versus environmental factors, uh, nature versus nurture or whatever. And it'll be pretty obvious which one it is depending on, well, depending on the case. If they're looking at uh, adopted kids versus just twins. Right. Chemical trials, the best way to think about it is that the most important things come first. And the most important thing is always safety. The second thing is that it gets bigger and bigger as the phases go along. Of course, if you want to test that something's safe to use at all, you're not going to get 5,000 people just to, to drink the Kool-Aid and see what happens. You're going to get a few and then go from there. So phase one, is it safe? Phase two, is it better? Does it work? Sorry. Phase three, is it better? And then phase four, you look at the long-term effects. Are you going to need black box warnings? Is it going to be safe to use in pregnancy all the time? So again, phase one, is it safe? Phase two, does it work? Is it better? Long-term effects. And this is the kind of stuff that you end up reading in your, uh, in your journals when you end up you know, reading journals and stuff.